Jesus said, do not love the world or the things in the world. For if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. It's kind of strange that Jesus would say, do not love the world, do not love the world. And then in John 3.16, we read, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God did not send his world, his son, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So we're being told, don't love the world. And then in the next phrase, God so loved the world. But God is telling us to love the people, to love their souls, to be concerned about their eternal destiny, but don't fall in love with the sin that has captured them. Don't love the lifestyle. Don't get entangled in their materialistic attachments and fleshly bondage that characterizes their lives. Don't love and become hung up on things. Don't, hang, don't focus on things. Well, number one, 1 John 2.17 tells us that the world and things are passing away and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Let me tell you what the Bible says is going to happen to this world. Turn to 2 Peter 3 and 10. The Bible says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat, both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. And therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord? Because the heavens, again, he said, will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. The world will not last forever. Not going to be around forever. The ozone is dissipating. The clean water supply is running low. The temperature of the earth is rising. North Korea has a hydrogen bomb. Iran may soon have one if they don't already have one. God says pretty soon this world is out of here. This world is passing away. I also want to say, though, that even if the world was not going to pass away, you're going to pass away. Pretty soon you and I will be out of here. And if you end up in the hot place, You'll be wishing you'd never seen some of the things and some of the people you were so attached to that you just couldn't do without in this world. If you go to heaven, you'll be so enraptured that you won't even think about this earth and anything that is on it. Believers are meant to be the kingdom of God, the subjects of God on the earth. Believers recognize God as king. They recognize him as Lord and ruler over their lives. This world is violent and immoral. But in this violent and immoral world, let's talk about some of the treasures and prizes that we ought to seek for while we're on the earth. Number one, we should seek for salvation. Number two, we should seek for righteousness. Colossians 1.13 says that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom 
of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our sins. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. Jesus taught us to pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is establishing his kingdom, his eternal kingdom on the earth and then in eternity. And the Bible says in Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not eating and acceptable to God and approved by men. And Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all of these things, righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. So we're fighting for salvation and for righteousness in a violent and in an immoral world. Fighting for our salvation. Fighting to be saved. Fighting to hold on to God. Fighting to make it to heaven. But also fighting to introduce as many other people as we can to Jesus Christ that they may also receive salvation. And so evangelism is not an option for the church. Evangelism is a mandate for the church. And it's more than a mandate. It is a survival strategy. We've got to win the world or we've got to be destroyed by the world. We need to be bringing everybody we can to Jesus Christ, introducing every soul to the salvation of God, bringing them in to the church, bringing them to the kingdom of God, and seeing them grow and develop in the things of God. If you know I'm right, clap your hands and give praise to God. We've got to win the world. Jesus inducted Saul who had been an enemy of the church, into the church and into the ministry. And into the ministry. Paul was on his way to tear apart some churches and, and God slapped him off his beast on Damascus Road and let him know who he was. He said, listen, I'm Jesus, whom you are fighting, whom you are persecuting, but stand on your feet. Acts, 6, Acts 26, 16. Rise and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of the things that you've seen and the things which I will yet reveal to you. Jesus said to Saul, you are to be a minister and a witness. That means you show concern for people. You serve people. You help people even as you witness to them. And then the Lord said to Paul in verse 17, I will deliver you from the Jewish people as well as from the Gentiles to whom I now send you. How many of you know sometimes God has to deliver you from people before he can send you to people? The Lord says some of you are more concerned about what people think about you than you are about what people think about me. You really can't represent Jesus Christ if you are all wrapped up in getting men's attention on yourself. Well, Lord, what do you want me to do? In verse 18, he said, you're going to open their eyes. Sin has blinded them so that they cannot find their way. He said in the latter part of that verse, you're going to turn them from darkness to light. They're blinded. They can't find their way. They're in the darkness. They're in the darkness. Turn them from the power of Satan to the power of God. Every person on earth is in a struggle against Satan. And without God's power, against Satan. And without God's power, you cannot win the battle. God went on to speak to Paul and say that I, I want you to preach forgiveness of sins. And if you preach it, they'll receive forgiveness of sins. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace is upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. If we introduce the world to Jesus, Jesus will transform the lives of men. Listen, when you win a soul for the Lord,
You robbed Satan. Of one more victim. When you win a so you give that person a new lease. On life, when you win, for the Bible says there's more joy in heaven over one that repented than it is over nine, nine and ninety-nine who need no repentance. When you win a soul, you make the world a better place. And so Jesus said, "Go into all the world." and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. But let me ask, if we don't go, how can we to follow us? Because the Bible said, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. In my name they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink, Anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. But if we don't go, how can we expect that the signs are going to follow us? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Daniel, those who are wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The only stars are not in the newspaper. The only stars are not on television and in the movie theater. Some of you are stars because the Bible says if you turn many to righteousness, you'll sign just like a star. Look at your name and say, hello, star. Hello, star. And so salvation and righteousness are the prizes, are the treasures that we must seek. We've got to share them with everybody that we can. But there's one word that we've not yet dealt with, and that one word is fighting for salvation and righteousness in a violent and immoral world. How many of you know we're in a fight? How many of you know we are in a battle? ISIS is fighting. Al-Qaeda is fighting. And if you are playing while your enemy is fighting, then you're going to lose every time. Look at two people and tell them, don't play, fight. This is a fight. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Hallelujah. And then Paul again said in 2 Corinthians 10 and 3, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against 